so what's up guys a little tutorial on the uh, oil change for the Birdman 200 this is my first time doing this oil change so eh, it's a little new um, looking for a 17 millimeter drain bolt there's two bolts under there the one that looks most like the drain bolt to me is not the drain bolt uh, I'll take a picture and insert it here so you can see exactly which one the other one's definitely not 17 millimeter so 17 millimeter you can't go wrong the only one under there that I see that's remotely close to 17 millimeter. And up on the center stand, there's not really enough room to get my full size drain pan. So I'm gonna use a uh, half of a uh, gallon milk jug that I cut off that is questionably short and not sure if it's going to even hold all the oil but we'll give it a shot and it's nothing but spilled milk if it doesn't work so and i just remembered this was kind of overfilled by the previous owner so this definitely may not hold all this oil so y'all watch that while uh i go grab a rag and stuff uh, it's slowed to a slow enough drip for me. Um, this is the uh, 3, 000, or first 3,000 mile service. I'm doing it a little prematurely. I'm at 3,300 miles, but I've got a busy schedule coming up, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock it out. The gear oil, according to the manual, doesn't need to be serviced until 6,000 miles, so I'm not touching it. So, we will get our 17 millimeter bolt. Make sure you don't lose the uh, washer in this process. I'm sure there's a torque spec for that, but I'm not that worried about it. Let's jump to the other side. Okay. Now I'm swapping containers to something large enough to make sure I can catch everything that comes out of this oil filter. You need a eight millimeter and it really helps if you have an extension that is longer than say three inches. There is a timing mark. If you can call it a timing mark, there's a witness mark on this cover. I'm not sure if it shows up in video, but there's a triangle right there. So make sure you put that back in the same spot assuming these holes are all in the same bolt circle and it's possible to not put it in the same spot make sure that that goes in the same spot assuming mine's even in the right spot because someone else serviced this the first time around the exhaust is definitely in the way not making this incredibly easy. And you'll definitely make a mess onto the exhaust pipe, at least to some small degree. Oil doesn't look horrible. Again, I'm premature on the oil change slightly. Super long one out of the left, lower left, equal length out of the lower right. And gonna be a shorty out of the top. Right, the cover has a spring on it. Be sure not to lose or disregard that. All right, there's an O-ring. O-ring stuck to, in my case, the, well, the case, the engine. I will peel it off gently. 
place it back in the cover. Fits like a glove, looks good. No need to worry about replacing that. Let me see if I can find something to fish that oil filter out. Actually, we'll just see if we can use one of our bolts. Looks like it fits through the hole. Oh, no hole there. I really have no idea how they expect you to get that out of there. Okay, here it comes. So, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. There is an O-ring on this side of the oil filter. And it does tell you in the manual to replace that O-ring with every use. And the replacement oil filter does not come with a new O-ring. That O-ring is not built onto the filter. It's a separate, just, it's, just, it's just its own O-ring. And there's not a groove on the oil filter. Um, if you can see it down here, there's the the o-ring is way smaller than this indent is so this o-ring has to be installed uh, on the boss in here prior to fitting the new oil filter so the only trick i have to do that is possibly balance it on my finger reach it in there and then see if you can slide it on fortunately if you drop it there's nowhere for it to go but that's an incredibly dumb design i mean i'm no engineer but that's dumb all right i think i've got it it looks like it's not going anywhere the new filter i'll go grab it when we push it on it'll settle that on there okay now I bought a genuine Suzuki genuine parts oil filter. Here it is still in the cellophane. The oil filter that come out of it is a KNN and the part number is uh, KN-131. So if you're wanting to try to pick one of these up at your local Advanced Auto, O'Reilly's, um, what's the other one? Advanced Auto Parts. What do y'all got up north? Canadian Tire? Some garbage like that. Um, if you're going to try to pick one up there, K&N filter is probably going to be your best bet. And if we're believing the part number I pulled out, it'll be KN-131. KN uh, oil filter is solid on one side. Got the uh, inlet hole on the other side, so it only really fits. You could stick it in backwards. I was going to say it only really fits one way. I think... The indent's the same on both sides. You could put it in backwards. So we have the O-ring in there. Now, there's no other kind of timing mark or anything on this. The the boss inside the... Let me see if I can get this. If you look at the... If you tilt your phone with me and look at the top, there's an, an added boss that sticks off in there. But that doesn't appear to insert into any notch on here so we will give it a good twist that k and n filter seemed to like fit on here really tight and this one does not um to be honest it don't concern i'm not that worried about it because I'm confident I've got the O-ring all the way on. I feel I feel pretty certain about that. And the, there's a spring on the cover to help hold this there. So, not that worried about it. So, ditch the glove. And move back to the cover. Pull any dog hairs off the cover. And locate our timing mark. Okay. 
And there's just like no room in here. That'll do it. I know you can't see nothing, but it's just the way it is. Long two bolts go on the bottom, bottom left, bottom right. Short bolt goes up top. I promise you, if you put it in the wrong spot, you'll figure it out soon enough. It's got them all started. I'm gonna button these up. I'm gonna wipe a uh, excess oil off the exhaust. I'm pretty sure the torque spec for these is gonna be like it is for all eight millimeter headed metric uh, Japanese motorcycle scooter bolts. It's around eight foot pounds. Uh, I just go with a good elbow click. I'm not getting the torque wrench out for this. You could honestly, as tight as you could possibly get it by hand with this screwdriver adapter, would probably be tight enough that it never leaks. If we're being honest. But we'll put a little extra on it. Just to be safe. That should do the trick. All right, clean up the excess oil. That way when we start it, we can see if we've got any leaks and we'll get her filled up. All right, so we've got the drain bolt buttoned up. We've got the oil cover buttoned up. I'm gonna be using a Mobile One Racing 4T 1040. No, you do not need a motorcycle specific oil for any scooter with a CVT clutch. I just ha I already have this on the shelf. It's the right weight. I trust it. I use it in everything else, so I'm going to use it in this. If you buy this normal Mobile One synthetic 1040 non-motorcycle oil, you'll be fine, and you'll save some money. Uh, I buy this stuff by the case in the wintertime when it's on sale for like $6.99. So I'm not wasting any money. I'm not losing any money. I'm just going to use it. That's what I got, and I trust it. Now, all these bikes, to my knowledge, have one thing in common, regardless what market you're in, and that is they all have a center stand from the factory, as far as I know. However, in the owner's manual, it tells you to check the oil and fill the oil with the bike not on the center stand. Level ground with the bike stood up level, but not on the center stand. That's incredibly dumb. It makes no sense um, why they would do that. But... I'm going to check my oil, which I've been doing for the last 3,000 miles, and also fill my oil with it on the center stand. The dipstick is towards the rear of the engine. When you put the bike up on the center stand, you elevate the rear of the engine. So if you are at the full mark, when you're on the center stand, you're probably a cunt hair above the full mark off the center stand. So I'm gonna to try to stay off the full mark by eighth of an inch. And the previous owner I mentioned earlier, this thing was slightly overfilled. It wasn't enough that I was that worried about it, but it is very important you do not overfill a wet sump engine, especially a smaller displacement one. You've got a smaller crank, you've got everything is smaller and not if you overfill it a tremendous amount you can froth the oil and then cause the oil pump to not supply the top end with enough oil because there's air bubbles in it and you can you can fry the engine more likely what's going to happen if you overfill it just a little bit not a terrible amount is you're going to see your fuel economy and performance plummet uh, and then after as you continue to overfill it, eventually, like I said, you'll froth the oil and that'll be a problem. 
So we've put one full quart in. It calls for the book just says barely over a quart. Uh, but the side of the engine case here says 1200 milliliters. No, two, yeah, 1200 milliliters. One, two, zero, zero ml. So, yeah, that's right. I was thinking that would be liters, but I have to deal with metric and inch back and forth at work being a machinist enough to not have to deal with metric and inch volume measurement. So bear with me on that. So we're gonna check it right now after one full quart has been added and see where we're at. With it on the center stand, also important, you do not screw the dipstick in. The manual is very clear that you do not screw it in this may seem odd, and it kind of is odd, but other companies do this too. Uh, Honda ATVs and, and dirt bikes that have a dipstick, um, they are all checked with the dipstick out, not screwed in. So I usually stick them in and turn them one full turn counterclockwise as if I'm unscrewing it, just to make sure it's seated on top of the threads properly. And one full quart, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. One full quart put me above halfway. But again, we're on the center stand. It says check it on the flat. So I am going to add just a hair. It's like I said, up on the center stand, it should check more full, but I want to sneak up on the full mark a little closer. Actually, I want to go all the way to the full mark because when we start the bike, we're going to lose oil to the oil filter and the oil filter compartment. So. We'll go ahead and go plumb to the full line. We'll start the bike, recheck it after the start, start up. Oh, dead on the bottom edge of the full mark. It's perfect. We'll fire it up, check for leaks, and then recheck the oil level. Give it about 30 seconds, if that long, give it a little rev, and then check it. Sit for a second. All right, we're about an eighth of an inch off the bottom of the full mark. We're one thatch mark or neural mark or X mark, however you want to call it, away. It is perfect. So now onto the dash. We need to reset. Drop my funnel. We need to reset the uh, built in. Uh, service light whether we change it on time or not uh, whatever mileage you're at when you reset it it'll automatically go 3,000 from that point in time so since we're 300 miles early we go ahead and reset it now it will go off 300 miles early on us again next time which is what we want a true 3,000 mile interval Okay, this is the best angle I can get with my camera stand, and I have to have two hands to do this. So to reset the service interval light, we need to hold the left side button, which is the select button down. The, the key is off. Press the select button, turn the key, and continue to hold for at least two seconds. Okay, uh, the oil change light flashed at me twice. It may have flashed three times. And I think that's all it's gonna do. The owner's manual says, that your interval light will also flash. But since I was premature on the oil change, 
I guess it would make sense that the interval light didn't flash at me. All right, so that's it. Uh, it's that easy. Um, it's not super easy when you live in Alabama and it's nearly August. It's 100 degrees, 100% humidity, and uh, it ain't raining. It's crazy. So anyway, yeah, there it is. That's how simple it is. Drop the drain bolt, remove the cover, swap out the filter, add your oil appropriately, and then that is how you reset the uh, service interval light. And apparently if your service interval light had never came on to tell you to change. Yeah. The interval portion will not flash, just the oil change light or the wording oil change will flash without the wording interval. So there you go. It's that easy. Good for another 3,000 miles. I will catch you all in the next one. It is hot.